Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good day. And I hope you're ready to learn how to program a little bit more using the Kotlin programming language. So today's video is actually part three of this entire series on how to build out the YouTube application. So hopefully the last two videos were helpful in kind of just showing you how the Kotlin Android platform works. It does take a little bit of time to get used to. So just stay patient and stick with it and you'll just get better at it uh, every day you code in this language. So today's video, let me show you how we're going to proceed in this series by showing you where we left off in the last lesson. And what you're seeing in the middle here is the current list that we're rendering out inside of our application and in our project. And we're basically fetching a bunch of JSON objects from a REST API service. And our list is able to render out these video objects kind of like this over here in the middle so these are individual row items and today's video i want to show you how to kind of process all of these video objects and turn them into these items on the right side so you see how we have these images fully loaded on the top over here as well as the channel image on the small little circle down here and the way we're going to do this is not to try to write all of this code manually but instead we're going to use a third party library called Picasso. And so Picasso is something that a company called Square has kind of released open source and it makes loading all of these images inside of your application very easily. And it also stores it inside of a cache so that you don't have to constantly fetch these images from the internet, which means that you don't have to waste your user's mobile data. And this process is actually very, very easy to set up. So let's begin by going back into Android Studio right now. Okay, so let me quickly bring you back inside of our current project. And I would like to start off by first running our code so that I can try to remind you where we left off in the last video. And we're basically rendering out all of these list items with a image view at the very top there. And right below we have the video title that says Instagram Firebase and Intermediate Training Core Data. So that's really good. And all that is actually being set up in this main adapter class inside of this function called onBindViewHolder. And we're setting the video title text right on line 32. And that's kind of what we get. So what I would like to do now is to further flesh out my video rows using the layout file called video row XML right over there. So I would first like to show you how to perhaps add in the channel name of let's build that app right below the video title, you know, somehow. And the easiest way of doing this is to select the text on the left, drag in a text view anywhere you want, and then it kind of just shows up, right? So this is going to be the channel name. And if you double click it, you can just edit the text over there. And I would like to align this up right below the video title. So just drag the dots and make sure they are matching. So over there, drag it to the left as well and match this up to the right of the video title. So you'll notice that when you do this, the channel name is actually centered like that. And the way you fix this is to change the layout width to match constraint instead. And that's going to fully expand the text view to the actual constraints. And the other thing that you would want to fix is that the padding for this channel name is actually eight on the left and on the right. So why don't we line it up to be zero and zero? That way it looks a lot better and it matches the edges of the video title. Okay, so a really good step to take care of right there. And now why don't we move on to the channel image, which is this circular thing on the left side. Okay. So images, image view, drag this sucker in anywhere you want. And I'm going to use the IC launcher guy as my placeholder image for this image view. And the way that you want to place this is kind of align this on the left side. So you see on the left side there, and you want to place it underneath this image view guy. But you see how this is kind of in the way. So why don't I delete this constraint on the left side by just clicking on that. And that's kind of what you get. You notice how the channel name just follows wherever the video title is because the constraints are set up that way. So why don't we move this to the bottom of the video thumbnail image and that's kind of what you get. 
Now, the other thing about this circular image is that we have a hard-coded width and height, and I'm just going to use 40, 40 density pixels with DP, and for the height as well, layout height, 40 DP. You see once I change that, it kind of shrinks down to 40 density pixels. And now that I have this kind of anchored to the left side of the design view, you can drag this and anchor it to the right of that image view, and everything kind of just follows to the right side, for example, channel name just kind of follows along. And that's what we have for our video row. And with these changes, I'm just going to apply the instant change and hopefully it'll load a little bit faster. And so once you run this, you'll load your application. And now you have your image view at the very top and also the channel name at the bottom. And then this circular guy on the left side. So let's go ahead and head back into the main adapter to actually set the channel name to be something more meaningful than just this text. So the way that you would do this is to actually execute some more code inside of on bind view holder. And this guy is pretty much the function that allows you to modify information on your views. So the holder view has these text view components on it, so text view. And this text view five thing is actually the video row channel name and this is text view five so i'm going to go ahead and give it a more meaningful name so let's say text view channel hopefully i'll spell it correctly channel name like that and then this we would like to say let's see image view you know video thumbnail let's say thumbnail like that and for this you just want to Either say yes or no is just going to update all the references. And over here for this guy, let's say image four, let's change this to the channel, I don't know, profile for the image view. And let's see, click that checkbox, just hit the yes, and you should be okay. And now inside of your main adapter class, you can say text view, and you can access the channel name from your IDs that you just set up. So this is something that's kind of special to Kotlin that allows you to access your views very quickly. And, you know, before in the list view days of Android, this was actually very hard. So be very thankful that it's very easy now. So let's set the text to be something, I'm going to say video, and you can say name, or you can actually access the channel like that and use name, and that should be okay. And the fix that you have to apply are these optional question marks because all of these guys are going to be optional because they might not be there. So I'm going to hit the quick apply change button again. And that's going to change my layout to include the channel name right below like that. So let's build that up. And you might be wondering where this channel name comes from because you might have forgotten how we set up these video model objects. So let me remind you by going back to the main activity and we're parsing all of this stuff inside of fetch JSON. We're setting up the home feed with the home feed class and this class exists down here. So video, this object has a channel property on it and val is just a public property. This is how you define your classes and channel has a name property on it. So I actually don't like having these classes hanging out or hanging around kind of inside of this main activity class. So why don't we create a new Kotlin class called, I don't know, models, hit okay. Add this to git, I suppose, Let's say yes. And then paste that code in there that way. That way you don't have all this code down inside of this. So I would actually move the comment of the JSON code right below here as well, just for reference. And now we are kind of ready to load the images inside of our list view for each of these row items. All right, so the first question here is where exactly do these images come from for each individual video object inside of our list? Well, let me bring you back to the Chrome browser where our actual JSON service is actually returning our JSON objects. And you see we have image URL for each one of our video objects here. And that's kind of exactly where we want to load our images. So let me click on that. And you see that's exactly where that image is going to actually load. So that URL or the image URL is currently being saved inside of this property under video. So video image URL. 
and that's where we're going to load our image from. And the other thing that I want to show you is the Picasso library, which is a very powerful image downloading and caching library for Android. And it actually makes our lives much easier. We don't have to handle caching and all this code, which is all over here. And so the question is, how do we exactly install Picasso? Well, we just want to modify our Gradle file with this one line that installs Picasso 252. So let me just bring you back into the Gradle file for our module app. And down here, why don't we install Picasso as well? Hit the sync. And that's going to download all this good stuff into our project. And once it's done, you can run your code again. And now you're kind of good to go in terms of using Picasso. So question is, how do you exactly use Picasso to load images inside of the circular guy on the top? Well, you have all of this code. So let's see. You pretty much just want to use this one line at the very top there. And so you have to construct it with some kind of context thing. Then you load a image and then you put it into your image view. So those are the three couple of steps that I'll show you how to do right now. So let's go back to main adapter on bind view holder. And let's first get the image view at the very top so that we can load things into it. So the way you would do this is say val, I don't know, thumbnail, say thumbnail, image view equals holder dot view dot image view. And let me access the video thumbnail one. And I would like to add an optional here, optional there as well. And so now you just want to say Picasso, make sure you use the right one and say from or actually with some kind of context. So the context object is always something that's kind of confusing if you're not used to Android development. And so let me show you how to get to the context by saying holder dot view dot context. And this is the context that sort of belongs to this entire list. And we have to fix this with an optional there and an optional there as well. And then over here, you just say load with a path string. And inside of this, we just say video dot image URL. Again, that comes from our model class over there. And then finally, you just want to say into some kind of image view. So it's going to load this entire image. And then once it's done, it just puts it inside of this thumbnail image view. And let's see what that does for our code. And essentially, that's going to load these images kind of like that. You see how easy that was, right? And compared to iOS and Swift programming, this is just very, very simple. And if you use other things like CocoaPods in iOS, it's also very, very easy. So it just takes two lines to do this, and it's uh, very, very clean. So the other thing is we would like to load the image on this left side over here for the channel profile, and then we'll fix the spacing in just a little bit. So for the channel circular image guy, let's say val and now channel profile image view equals holder dot view and dot image view. Let's see channel profile. That looks pretty good. One thing I've noticed is that if you say holder question mark view question mark dot let's see image view, that actually works as well. So you can do either way. Hit the question mark first or second. It's all up to you. So Let's see, I can just copy that line above. And for the actual loading of the image, let me use the channel dot uh, profile image URL. And then over here we have thumbnail image view, but instead we want to use channel profile image view. So let me hit the quick apply change again. And that just loads everything very, very quickly. So you see how the spacing is a little bit weird. We don't have consistent padding on the left and the right. And you notice how the channel profile image view is actually square instead of this circular guy in this final product. So let me show you how to fix this circular thing first by importing yet another third party library into our project. And at this URL, a circle image view, we have this library that allows us to very easily get these corner radius to be perfectly circular. And you have to, again, copy this into your Gradle file. So let me move that out of the way and go back to our Gradle modification configuration. 
and paste that in there. Again, hit the sync button to install your Gerudo libraries. And now you can run your project again. And what I would like to do for the video row is to modify it so that we can use this circular image view class. So again, we have our square image view. And then the easiest way of doing this is to modify the text view. So this is the design view and this is the XML text view of this file. And for the image view channel profile, you can go ahead and modify image view to be circular image view or circle image view rather. And now you can just run your code again. And once your application loads, these images are going to be perfectly circular like that. So this requires a whole library to do this. Instead of Swift, it's just a corner radius. But you know, it's actually very easy to set that up as well. So why don't we go ahead and fix the issue with the video thumbnail padding. So you see on the left side, there's just this huge amount of space and it just doesn't feel all that clean compared to what this looks like. So how do you go about fixing this issue? Well, it's actually very tricky and it took me a while to figure it out. And the best way of actually fixing the image is actually using something called uh, aspect ratio for the image view up at the very top there. So the way that this is going to work, let me just zoom in a little bit, is I'm going to modify this image view to have a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And that's because all of these YouTube videos have a 16 by nine ratio. And the way that you would do this is to click on your image view. And there's this little triangular shape thing on the top left corner. And what you want to do is you want to click on this to toggle aspect ratio. And this doesn't always work the first couple times you do it. So let me click on that to get this one to one thing. And let me see if I can actually do this correctly. So modify this to be 16 by nine. And I don't think it's going to work, but let's see what it does. And so that's kind of what you get. It's not exactly perfect. So the way that you would actually fix this is to change these to actually say match constraint and it turns into this really large thing, right? So I'm going to click on these things a couple of times, click on that. And I'm going to say match constraint and also match constraints. And let me just wipe this guy out again, remove that. And you see how it's back to this little one line or one pixel height. I noticed that it doesn't exactly work perfectly if you have something set up previously. So if you can get it back to this state and then turn on this guy, so turn it on, turn it on like that. And now it's kind of like this over there. And you just hit 16 by nine and hit enter. And then it becomes a correct 16 by nine aspect ratio image view. So if you can get it to work properly uh, by going through these various steps of clicking these things and then changing these to match constraint, you should be able to get it correctly. And once you have that, you can run your application again. Your aspect ratio for your image views will now be correctly placed inside of your list view to be 16 by nine. And you notice how clean the spacing is right now. And the other little bit of kind of modifications for the font and text sizing is kind of done inside of the UI designer as well. So you notice how this is a little bit darker, this Instagram Firebase thing. So you can click on this and if your text appearance toggle is not showing, you just click down on this little twirly arrow. And you can bold your font if you want to. And I think this is let me see, let me scroll up a little bit. I think I want to say zero there. And I think I should be okay. So if I apply the changes to my application now, it should load up fairly quickly. And we have the text over there. If you want to change the text size to 15 SP, so make sure you use SP for your font changes or your font sizing. And now that looks a lot better, right? And then the other thing is that the channel name has some spacing below it. So to get the spacing to be cleaner, you would do something with something else. So let's say view all attributes inside of here. It kind of matches what you see in the text version. So this thing over here, you can do it in either view. 
Now let's say over here, padding bottom, and let's see, you can double click on this value and say 16 DP for density pixels. And once you have that, you can run your application one more time. You'll see some more spacing right below the channel name. That way everything just looks a little bit cleaner. And the other couple of things that are added onto this channel text is the 20K views and four days ago. So if you want to do that, you can also add it into your, let's see, holder view text channel name and just add some things onto it. So I'm going to add and let's say option, option eight gives you a dot and you can say plus, I don't know, 20, let's see, 20 K views and let's see, let's turn out the caps views new line four days ago and you should be okay so let me run that one more time and all my views inside of this app over here should have an extra line at the bottom and you see it's starting to look a lot better right again so one thing that you might notice right now is that uh, there's actually this little bit of spacing at the very top and also at the bottom here that I don't exactly like I would rather have it so that it actually flushes all the way to the top of the action bar or the nav bar at the very top. And it should be kind of like this over here without the cutting of the image view. So the issue right now is in activity main, you have your list view or your recycler view, which has the padding of 888 everywhere. So you can change this to zero and just clips it to the top, change that to zero, change this to zero. And then finally change this to zero for your activity main. And this way, your list view is not uh, including the padding of left, uh, top, right, and bottom of eight. So you kind of see it is cut off by the bottom capacitive buttons. And that's pretty good. And uh, if you want to include more spacing for your image view, you would go back to your video row. You would modify this guy instead. So view fewer attributes. Go here and make the 16 to push it from the top, left, and right so 16 and now you should be okay so for this guy you want to push it to the left 16 as well and over here let's just give this 16 for the channel or the video title rather and hit the instant change again and the thing i like about android the most is that it's actually very fast to redraw your layouts and that's kind of what you get so everything looks a lot cleaner and the final thing that you might want to modify is to include this horizontal line at the very bottom of each one of your rows. I don't know if you're too interested in doing that, but there's a couple of tricks to kind of include a horizontal line. And I'll show you one easy way of doing that. And it's kind of a hack, but let's just drag a text view in here. And let's see if I can do this while I record. So I'm going to remove the actual text view. Oh, let me do this first. So I'm going to align this to the right and then align this to the left. And then let me remove the left and right padding values to be zero and zero. And what I'm going to do is to give this thing a background color. So let's say, uh, where is the background color guy? It's always very hard to find these things in here. So background, that's not there. You want to actually edit these all attributes add in a background that's what you get and then you can say color black so android color black gives you this all right so go back to the view fewer attributes and for the layout width you want to say match constraint it does that for you so if you apply these changes again you'll get this big horizontal bar at the bottom of your video rows so that's kind of what you see right so that's a little strange, but that kind of works. And so the thing with this is that you want to align this to the bottom as well somehow. And so that if you just drag it to the bottom, it just gets aligned to the bottom. And so this, I just want to give it a padding of zero. And for the layout height, I would say 0 0.5 or one DP that shrinks it down to that one very thin line. And that way you can render out this horizontal line at the very bottom. And that's kind of a neat trick to how to get that to work. And if you want to clean that up a little bit, I would rather go to the text view mode and you can just use a view instead of text view because you don't really need the text version of that. 
which means that it's a more lightweight component and that just cleans up your view a little bit more. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Um, I do recommend looking into Picasso a little bit more. It's a really helpful library that manages your images and caching for you so that you don't have to do all of this manually. So make sure to go check that out. And then in the next video, we'll look at how to click on these list view items so that we can start a brand new activity, which is just another page inside of your Android app. Okay, if you want to download the source code for today's video, make sure to check out the link in the description below and also give it a thumbs up for this video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I am going to prepare the next lesson right now and hopefully I'll see you in that video. Bye bye guys.